guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Monday, January 22nd, uh, day after Celtics beat the Rockets. Someone said lost to. Uh, and you guys are hearing this uh, the day after the Celtics take on the Mavericks. Again, as per usual, you're going to hear our recap of that game cut into this episode. We're recording this at about 1 p.m. We haven't seen the game yet, so we will be uh, talking about that in a little bit. But yeah. Uh, how are you today, Sam? How are we doing? We've already recorded Talk and Seas today. Go watch that. It's already on the channel. But... Doing good. A little Chill. hungry, but I had a snack, and after this, I'll eat and write and then record again and watch the game and then record again. Oh, yeah. A lot of stream yard action today. Yes, sir. A lot, of, a lot of stuff to do, but... Get our money's yeah. worth. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, in that case, let's, uh, let's throw it over to the Celtics Mavs recap. All right, thank you to our past selves for throwing it on over to us. Sam and I are here at 11. Uh, after the Celtics win over the Dallas Mavericks, swept their back-to-back in Texas, uh, wins over the Rockets, and the Mavs, who are fully healthy again. Luka Doncic returned from his injury uh, last game against the Lakers. They lost, lost again to the Celtics, back-to-back against the two rivals. 119-110 win for the Mavs. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown led the way. Uh, Jalen Brown finished with 34 points, three rebounds, four assists. Jason Tatum, 39, 11, five, three steals, two blocks, two blocks for Jalen Brown, too, by the way. Drew Holiday, big night from three, 17 points. Derek White did not have it uh, as much, but he still made his impact as Derek White does. Uh, 17 for Drew, like I said, seven and six. And then Luca put up, as you can imagine, Tim Hardaway Jr. also decided just to be electric in this game. He didn't miss many shots either, but uh good win. Very good win for the Celtics on a back-to-back. Yeah, very impressive from the Celtics. They kind of came out of the gates looking like me and the boys playing Sunday ball, but it turns out they got their heads out of their ass and really played well from the second quarter on. Even the third quarter, though, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't awful, and they did let Dallas get kind of close at the end of the game, but closed it out, responded well. Um, Really, really happy with what I saw from Tatum and Brown today. Neither one of them shot particularly well from three, but did a great job of forcing the issue where it was working. Uh, wow, 19 free throws from Tatum is kind of crazy. Missed yeah, four. Yeah, you got to the line. <laughs> yeah, these guys hate making free throws. Um, but good on him for forcing it and getting to the line yes. because I'm all for that. Like, I'd rather see you – I mean, I hate watching missed free throws, but – I would for sure rather to see them do that than miss a bunch of threes because they're just settling. Uh, he he did a great job. Obviously, anytime you have 39 and you're shooting above 50%, I'm going to be happy. I also thought his defense was fantastic, especially to close this one out. He was all over the place. He was making things difficult on guys and just inspired basketball from your two star players in a game that was up for grabs, especially down the stretch. It got to seven. I think after they were up, what, 15 in the fourth? They had a decent size lead in the fourth, and it it trickled down to seven, but they closed it out. Also, shame on Jason Kidd for fouling. (laughs) It was like a minute and 15 left. He's fouling. Like, what? Mm. Yeah. You wanted a chance, man. (laughs) They didn't have a chance in that one. Action. Uh, another good assist game for the Celtics. They were swinging it well. 26 in this one on 41 made baskets. That's pretty good, if you ask me. Uh, they had 31 against the Rockets, too, which, again, good ratio there. Um, they haven't had below 20 assists in game. They've only had that, like, one salt. Two, three. They haven't had it in a while. I was looking through. Um, Jays were awesome, like you said. Uh, got to the line. They forced the issue. Not only that, they forced an issue in a game where the refs were very hesitant to call anything in the first half. Like the refs were being very um, loose with the whistle, not in like a bad way, but they were letting like letting the, letting the guys play. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown made them call these calls because they got to the hoop and they got into the teeth of defense and they forced them to, to make a call because there was so much contact. So credit to them for that. Four assists, five assists for Brown and Tatum respectively. That's great. You love to see that. Uh, Pritchard, Good game off the bench. Didn't shoot particularly well, but seven rebounds, six assists. Uh, he was crashing the glass super well for them. Just a good all-around game. And and one that you would want to see 
after a um after a tough win in Houston on the second night of a back to back without Kristaps Porzingis uh, and O'Shea Brissett. Sam, sorry, my bad. Uh, but good yeah. game. Very good. Well, they did this in like a impressive fashion too. Like yesterday in Houston felt a little different. I don't know if it's because we didn't see monster games from Tatum and Brown. I know Brown had the triple double, but like scoring wise, where they could take over the game and really have it in the palm of their hand, controlling everything. And it was Porzingis that had to step up in the fourth quarter. Today, those two guys spearheaded the closing of this game. Tatum brought it on defense. He got out and ran in transition, and Jalen made the tough shots. That's championship level basketball from your top two players. And the calmness within the rest of the team was also extremely impressive. To circle back to Pritchard, he did have like a crazy impactful game without shooting particularly well. He literally had like the same off shooting numbers that Hauser had with seven rebounds and six assists. Yeah. <laughs> Hauser who uh, made three. He made one. Come on. He did. He he made one. <laughs> And he was one of two. He just didn't really have yeah. a lot of opportunities today. But I really get excited when we see Pritchard do the extra stuff because I just think he's mm -hmm. a little different in the sense that he's got that ball handling, shot creation ability. And if he's able to tap into that a bit off the bench, this team is going to be that much more dangerous. He's kind of stepped into a role where he's doing just about what Malcolm Brogdon would do to a lesser degree. He's not six men of the year. He's not playing to that level but he's giving the team what they need off the bench and he's doing mm -hmm. it in a way where it's under control. Excellent work. Drew mm -hmm. holiday shooting 12 threes on 13 <laughs> shots is kind of weird. He made them. He was open. No, they are good shots. Yeah. But it's just a strange way for him to be used. It's a I know we've seen line. him. What'd you say? I said it was, it's a strange stat line for him. For yeah. sure. Yeah, it sure is. Like it, it's just kind of weird. I didn't hate it. I have no problem with him taking them. Like his threes were good shots. That's not what I'm saying. Just like, wow. Like they didn't even need him to do anything. Like no. he had like basically the day off after not <laughs> playing yesterday. They said, just stand yeah. out there, catch and shoot. And you're good. You're good. Al Horford. Another good game. Dude. It is so nuts that the Celtics can be down their starting center and just say, yeah, we have Al. We'll just throw Al Horford in there. Don't worry about it. Like that, that is such an absurd luxury that this team has. That's it's just, I, I, every time KP's out, I, I get a kick out of just like, Oh yeah, we'll just slide uh, an all defensive caliber, sharp shooting big man who can switch on the perimeter into the starting lineup. Like that exists anywhere. <laughs> like that's just, that's just it's the thing every like team has. <laughs> how last season Blake Griffin would be that guy for them where like supercharged. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like yeah. Blake Griffin would step in after like not playing in X amount of games when Horford needed the night off and he would start and he would do a pretty decent job because he was getting a good chunk of playing time. Mm -hmm. But Al Horford is doing all that stuff. Plus he's playing really good defense and being reliable on that end of the floor. And he's shooting super high from three. He's super reliable. He is in the, I think it's going in every time he shoots a club. Mm, is he? Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting that he's in there and Hauser's not. I feel like I guess Horford's been. What have you done lately. for me lately? Yeah, yeah very short sighted. Um, actually, I guess Hauser has been hot enough. He's shooting better than Horford on the season, I suppose. I don't know. Oh, on the season, feel, yes, that's good. Uh, I mean, like probably in the last like five games. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, yeah, man, awesome, awesome game. Luca was. Pretty good in this game too. He he. I forgot how much I watch. detest Luca. Thirty three, eighteen, thirteen, and two, and that's not even the best stat line of the night. How crazy is that? Wait, you said uh, what? He had thirty three. Not, not not the stat line. What you said before that? He's nuts. Like what he uh, does. Like he's, he's, he's just he crazy. crazy to watch. I'm like I hate that guy. No, 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 no. I said he's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like he he the way he dude. There was one play where he literally just dribbled the ball, walked down the lane, and was just like just like. Just flicked it up, just just got it in, and then another one. He got fouled by Pritchard, and he just went like this, and it just went in anyways. Like what? That what are was you doing? A crazy make, yeah. Insane, insane. He's incredible. Uh, he eighteen he's rebounds. So talented. Mickey Mouse eighteen rebounds. Because <clears throat> like five of them came off of like a bunch of misses right under the basket. It was like Nimi stat padding type thing. Find thirteen rebounds with five off. Like hey, I, you still take thirteen <laughs> rebounds from your guard. 
<laughs> I can't Kyrie, stand watching uh... this guy play, man. He cries Kyrie. so much. He is he is the worst crybaby in the NBA. He, he does, might be he worse does. than LeBron. Yes. Yeah, he, he's definitely up there. Kyrie was also solid in this one. He made some threes, made some shots. I thought the Celtics defended him all right. He made some tough looks. Derek Lively's good, real good. Yeah, he he good didn't play a ton, but he is, yeah, he's a good player. And then they needed that man, after last year. They had nobody. Our guy, Sam, Mr. Grant. Grant, he has perished. Grant, <laughs> just tough to watch. <clears throat> he's not good. That was a bad, great game. Real bad. That was it's weird because, like, we know Grant's not bad. Yes. Like, he's bad in, like, a we like to make fun of him way, but he's legitimately not a bad player. Yeah. I'll just, I'm just going to play this on the screen real quick. Just Let's see. We can talk through it, but uh, <laughs> I didn't know what this was until I I saw him take off. <laughs> wait, wait, hold up, I need to find a video. Uh, this and is the most perfect. Context. <laughs> Grant just, the, it's just the the complete and utter brag. You got you got baby broed by Jason Tatum. He just Tatum was just like, nah, you're not getting that shot off. Um, listen, I, I like Grant. We all know this. Anybody who's listened to the pod for more than X amount of time, anybody who's listened to us through last season knows that I am a Grant Williams fan. I think he's an effective player when he's at his best. Uh, I think he's an important guy to have, uh, when he can be defending centers and when he's hitting his threes, if he's not hitting his threes value goes down by a lot. Yeah. If, if he's not defending as well, value goes down by a lot. Both of those presented themselves in this game. Not very good. <laughs> Still the funniest guy ever. Just look at him laying there. I need to find a video because I want to compare it to this, but I don't know where. Do you know the video of the, is it the Joker who just ends up like ragdolling and, and skidding across the ground? Do you know the video I'm talking about? Uh, uh do you, What is the video? Ragdolling and skidding no. across the ground? God damn it. I don't. At I don't the end of the dark night, he falls it. out of the. The building. It's, I don't think it's not, not the Joker. It's not the Joker. It's like a guy falling in a crowd and he's like skidding across the, the floor. I, I don't know how to explain it, but just my point is watch Grant's body just like lifelessly ragdoll across the ground after this. <laughs> just, just Yeah, it's called this, he wants to flop. This this point in time is just like cooked. <laughs> he's just he's just done. <laughs> I just love oh, how angry man. Tatum was at the end of that play, like talking shit to Grant. And then there was the weird Grant wraps up Jalen Brown play, which was harmless, yeah. but it just looked weird because everyone kind of got like all like, whoa, but like, obviously they're not like mad at each other. Mm. It's just, yeah. I, I love Grant. He is such like a like nerd loser. Hardo wants to be tough guy. And it's so great mm. to watch because these guys mm. love to fuck with them. It's very fun. It's very fun. Um, I don't know what else there is. This is a pretty straightforward yeah. game. Uh, comments can let us know if we forgot anything. Jalen highlights. Luca had no answer for him. Put him on his weird, ass. Weird offensive lulls. Again, they didn't last as long as in other games, but they were just like a few possessions in a row here and there where they just like stopped playing offense the right way, which was frustrating. And they got ended up being bailed out by Tatum and Brown. But it does feel like in the second half lately, and I, I you felt it a little in this game that the Celtics just go away from the offense that works. Um, not a good trend. Don't like it. Um, but didn't end up biting them in the ass in this game. So it's okay. Actually, we have 29. second half totals. Yeah, it's not as bad as I thought. So they had 24 in the first, 41 in the second, which was first half of 65. And then second, third quarter, 29, 25 in the fourth for 54. 54. And they won the third quarter, 29 to 24. So not terrible overall. So just it just felt a little off at times. Only six turnovers, too, which is good. They've been taking care of the ball quite a bit lately. Even in that loss to Denver, they <laughs> took care of it. Not great against... Um, Houston, but other than that, yeah, they had 16 against Houston, but they, they were good in Denver. Good yeah, tonight. Do. Um, but it hasn't been outside of that Houston game. It hasn't been 15 plus since Indiana on the eighth. So good. Good. Um, not that 15 is the bar, but you know what I'm saying? Anyways, any final thoughts for get out of here? Good win over the match. No, good uh, win. Solid play. A couple team. days off. <clears throat> yeah. Rest up for Miami. Big game. 
Big I'm game. so happy we have an easier Wednesday. <laughs> I agree. Getting back on the schedule of just being able to put out the the game recaps as their own videos, which I enjoy. I like that. Makes my life easier. Makes the pods easier though. It just I know. Show up, do like forty minutes. And then Much easier just... to. Uh, I know, but it's harder for me to edit because I can't edit it till after the game. So I have to wait oh, and edit the whole sucks. thing late at night. You know what I'm saying? Like I can edit yeah. it like six p.m. Uh, when we do it in the in the off days, but. Speaking of that, I'm going to go edit. We're going to throw it back over to our past selves uh, for the rest of the show. The NFL season is wrapping up, and there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. Now, the app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right. Hopefully we were there after a win, uh, so it wasn't miserable. Uh, it, you know what? Just, just don't just, – hopefully it wasn't miserable for me. That's, that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, but regardless. I have um, hope I get to ruin your night. I the worst part of that I feel like it's genuine, which annoys me because I feel like you genuinely take I get pleasure a kick of out getting of it. Yeah, yeah, which is so like I think it's realize, funny. I don't I don't like I'm not like I'm happy I upset Jack. I just you're think like it's funny. A, you're like a sociopath. The the funny is I actually I don't no, I actually do think that is the correct sociopath <laughs> definition. But when we were doing uh talking seas, that was excellent. <laughs> First you guys didn't have... watch it. Go, go watch Talking Seas from yesterday. Jack was none too pleased at one point in the trivia. Multiple points. The first thing we have is Sam is comparing the Celtics to the Chiefs. Uh, I'll let you explain this. I, I understand where you're coming from, but it's your thing. So I'll, I'll let yeah. you rock, then I'll give my thoughts. So the Celtics are playing tonight. Yesterday, the Chiefs played, and they won. They beat the Buffalo Bills, and they made their sixth straight – AFC title game, which is the NFL equivalent of the Eastern Conference Finals, pretty much. Uh, in doing so, all I've heard about is how the Chiefs have done this. And, you know, if you pay attention to any sports media, you hear about the Chiefs all the time. You hear about Pat Mahomes. You hear about how great they are, Taylor Swift. Uh, but the Celtics are kind of the Chiefs, except they're not as good. But they are the Chiefs. So the Celtics have made... Five of seven, as of right now, Eastern Conference Finals. Hoping to make six of eight this year. They've had that similar sustained success where they're just always in it. I don't really know if they are at the scary level as the Chiefs. Like, I don't think you're like another team's fan and you're like, I don't want to play the Celtics. But they're definitely there. Like, they're, they're not everyone's first choice to play in the playoffs. They've also had like very similar paths to success. Celtics picked Tatum in 2017. Chiefs picked Mahomes in 2017. They have run into several guys on the way to trying to win a championship. First, the Chiefs had Brady, which everyone around here knows. Brady beat them in 2018 in the AFC Championship, then beat them in the Super Bowl a couple years later. The Celtics ran into LeBron several times, but they played him in 17 and 18. Uh, that was Tatum's first big playoff series was the LeBron one. And I mean, it went seven games. It was kind of heartbreaking the way it ended. And you really thought the Celtics were going to get past him. They didn't. Then they finally get to the finals. So this is like a LeBron slash Steph Curry. They had to play these guys thing because they finally get over the hump of not making the finals. And another one of the game's greats is they're waiting for them, Steph Curry, and they come up short against him. So Kansas City's equivalent of those two is just one guy. It's Brady with two different teams. So kind of two guys. But they had that too. So not only do they have guys that like they really couldn't deal with, but they've also had guys that they can always deal with. For the Chiefs, we saw it yesterday, they always beat the Bills. Is this the third time, fourth time that they've beaten the Bills in the playoffs with this current like group on both sides? 
That's a great question. I can look. It I up. think I, it's I at least know. three. A lot of times. Three times. Three times. So three in the, the past Bills, four seasons. So like a lot. Three, three in the past four years. Okay. So the Bills are the uh, NFL equivalent of the Philadelphia 76ers. Same colors. <laughs> same round. They always lose in the second mm-hmm. round. Actually, did the Bills make the AFC Championship last year? No. Uh, I know they lost to Kansas yeah. City, but I don't know if they got that far. You asked me a lot of questions about football. I'm I sorry. can rattle them off about ba- about basketball, but uh, no, it was the Chiefs Bengals in 2023. Okay, so yeah, second round merchants is uh, Bills. Bills also looking like the Sixers in that in that fashion. Bills have Bills made did. the AFC Championship once though, so they they did. I okay. guess they better did. than the Sixers. But okay, but they always lose. They still yeah. always lose. Yeah. So like, if you're a Chiefs fan and you see that the Bills are going to come up in the next round of the playoffs, you're laughing. And there's probably like five percent of Chiefs fans that are like, "Well, maybe this is the Bills' year. Like, they have to beat the Chiefs at some point." That was me last year with the Celtics Sixers. Did not appear to be the case. But if you really want to dive deep into that, Bills lost two heartbreaking games against Kansas City last year. It was the overtime one where they just like needed to get a stop to win the game and. Kansas City got a field goal in 13 seconds. Then this year they missed the field goal. Philly lost game six and seven last year to Celtics. Mm. Same thing. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. But there's there's like a lot there. It's kind of weird how similar they've been. The Celtics just don't win. They don't finish the job. And they very rarely <laughs> actually make the finals. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, the big difference there being the Chiefs have actually won two, ta- two well, They play football. Uh, they also do play football. That is a big difference. I see it though. I, I see what you're saying. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if the better example would be the Bengals right now, because they have they haven't had the same sustained success, but they have made the finals. They did lose, and they have made multiple um, conference championship appearances. They have, but it hasn't been as they made both. Oh, because they yeah, lost cause... last year. They made the one and where they, they won. Mm-hmm. Or... That was it though. So it's only two. So it's not exactly the same. But um, <clears throat> they have also not won. But yeah, no, I, I definitely see the comparisons. The Chiefs sustained success is very similar to um, the Celtics. And then I don't know if you even talked about the players, but like Tatum is, is he around the same age? No, he's younger than Mahomes. But he's younger the because of the, the college rules, but they got drafted the same year, 2017. <clears throat> yeah. So you want to do celebrity fans? <laughs> Taylor Swift. And I think uh, the Chiefs take win. your pick. I think the Chiefs win, right? Celebrity fans for sure. They have another yeah. big celebrity fan who I'm forgetting. Is it um, isn't Jason today gets a big Chiefs fan? He is. He's from Kansas City. Yeah. Okay. And um, so is the guy from Modern Family. Oh What's yeah, Eric Stone Street. Eric yeah. Stone. Yeah, Eric He's Stone. Another Street. one. Yeah, I think they beat. So that they, they definitely That's win a good the uh, pull, Jack. <laughs> thank you. Good show, Modern Family. Eric Stone Street's awesome too. He did a. Uh, I I know him because he did a um. A gag. There was like a prank where he dressed up as Andy Reid and went to the practice and started walking around and messing with the Chiefs players. Uh, but anyways, no, I definitely see the, the similarities. Uh, I know you're writing about it for Celtics blog, so I'm sure you'll go into detail and, and explain it even more there. But um, it makes sense, and I, I do think it's relevant with the uh, the Bills once again, or the Sixers, I guess, once again losing. Yeah, maybe maybe the Bills <laughs> Sixers. Uh... Liberty Ballers article is really where they should be going. <laughs> Someone should bring that up. Poor guys. <clears throat> Brutal. But, um, yeah, I think uh, it's all. there wasn't much Celtic stuff. The Mavs game is going to take up a majority of this. But we can uh, <clears throat> jump on over to the email here. Uh, but first, up? we do have to do some what's popping. And I will also say, Sam, there was one what's popping comment. So we have one. That's it. Spin the wheel. Part. We got to respond. We got to we got to uh, remind people. Comment what's popping on the video for a chance to win a ten dollar gift card to Impop Nito. Please comment what's popping. This time, however, <clears throat> let's uh, spin the wheel and see who's winning. who's it gonna be. <laughs> he has been begging, and so I didn't feel bad for it being one person because Dave has desperately wanted to pop oh, in for yeah, a while. Dave was in the uh, the stream last Welcome. night, so he's earned it. Dave, you know what to do. Email us at HBTC Pod with your name and phone number. Uh, we'll get you hooked up, get you a gift card for in pop Nito. Uh, Anyone who's been again, wanting to win this must yeah. be in shambles that they didn't do it this time. I know. Like this was the time to play. Mm-hmm. And again, a reminder, uh 
put a comment down below. What's popping for a chance to win a ten dollar gift card to Impopnito? Anyways, uh, <clears throat> let's jump on over to the emails. See what y'all have to say. You can email us at, with your thoughts at hptcpod at gmail dot com. We'll start with the goat, <clears throat> RJ. <clears throat> wow, long oh, one. <sighs> Catch my breath here. What's popping? A mid season NBA rat list. We'll go one by one so I don't oh, die. I like this. I'm in lack of air. Afternoon, guys. 41 and 0 would have been nicest after the Denver game. Beating the defending champs would have been nice. World peace would you get the drift? I'm not terribly upset about last night's game. It's a playoff edition game. The Celtics learned some things about themselves. One thing I noticed in the third quarter was the first the Celtics just play better when they start possessions, treating everyone equally in the offense and let the ball find the open man. A stretch where they went on a 9 0 run in their third had a lot of sets where the Jays run the wings and move the ball to KPD right now. Anyways, here's my mid year rat list for the league references annotated as needed. Okay. Again, I'm going to go one by one. I so I don't all the way in. Uh... <laughs> so I don't lose my breath. Thank all you, right, RJ, one. in advance. <laughs> The pose. You know the one. The guy takes the three and stands there with the shooting arm up, wrist bent, regardless of whether the ball went in or not, uh, or not, ignoring the game action. Could you get involved in the rebound action or get back on defense? No. You're too busy posing for your ESPN TNT close-up. Close seconds, the after dunk flex, the flop and whine while the game is in progress. A lot of flop and sure. whine in the Celtics. <laughs> or a lot I don't whine, mind please. the... Uh, I don't mind the after dunk flex as long as it doesn't impact the getting back in defense. I'm fine. That's I'm okay with. I understand the pose. However, I feel I like I haven't noticed fun. the pose that much. Have you noticed the pose? Not as much by the Celtics. You know who does do it? Ironically, Derek White. Derek White poses a lot after the shot, but he, he mostly does, do does it. Pose. He mo- he yeah. mostly does it at, uh, when there's a timeout, though. So I don't think it impacts his defense. So I and I think the point of the rat list here is when it impacts your ability to get back on defense. So completely understandable. Fair. All right. Next one. Uh, dubious technicals. The NBA doesn't want people to hang on the rim. That's fine. Don't want to show up the refs. That's fine, too. Give players a verbal warning for the first one and move on. Whistling guys for trying to control their descent from a dunk is ludicrous. Yes. Agree. No Fair. argument. Referees are just invested in neck braces. They've got mm-hmm. stock in whatever company makes them. And they're like, please break your neck. Please break your neck. Please break your neck. I mean, the Tatum one over Peyton Watson was insane on Friday. That's crazy, yeah. Flying down the court in transition, <laughs> loud dunk. He's going super fast. He's just supposed to let go. How is that? How is that safe? Mm-hmm. Was it the pull up on the rim? I guess. Like, if you really want to be like that yeah. was the thing that he shouldn't have done. I I guess like you could do that as a taunt. But I don't know. Let's let's make also players say- not dying the priority instead of no showboating. I think the pull up thing was also. I don't think he saw where Peyton Watson was at the time. So I don't know if he knew if Peyton oh, Watson fair. fell or came down. So he's probably just pulling up to take a look and then get down. You know what I'm saying? That's very fair. I think that was definitely part of it. I, so didn't think, I, of I think it was, I think it was lame overall. Cause he's not fucking, you want him to be actively looking for if there are players below him when he's dunking the ball. That's stupid. Anyway, I think the NBA really just wants guys to like fall on their necks <clears throat> of all the things to be picky about. I think it's dumb. I agree. Next one from RJ, the perpetual well, what foul guys. Yeah, the refs blow it sometimes, but you have much more credibility with them. If you aren't doing your best Alfred E. Newman impersonation after every whistle. Yes, he got hit on the arm. Uh, you that was you with a fistful of jersey on the pick and roll. Stop looking so shocked. Um, the asterisks Alfred E. Newman was an iconic character from Mad Magazine. Look him up while I sit here and feel old. Okay. Do you know who that is? Did you know that no, before you? you said that? I did. No. Yes. Uh, yes. Agree. Agree. Celtics do I it too much. Is. Tatum. Yeah, I know who this is. A lot of palms up from Tatum. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's bad. I agree. <laughs> it's it's whack. Get back on defense. Uh, next one. NBA writers, quote, uh, who don't use trade checkers. I'm not talking about Joe fan who takes to Twitter to suggest their version of Alex Caruso to whomever or wants their team to sign Gordon Hayward if the Hornets cut him. Fans get to fan. Nah, these are the NBA equivalents of influencers who think they can build a brand by suggesting half ass trades that have no merit just to get clicks. Do your research or go back to calling uh, into your local radio show. I've said this a million times. Just fucking Google NBA trade machine. It's so easy to not put out illegal trades. It is the easiest thing ever. It's also like kind of funny. Like RJ is a point. Like people just do this. Wouldn't yeah. you care? Like you don't want that attached to your name. Like I wouldn't want someone to go to an article I wrote and be like, hey, dumbass. Yeah. That doesn't actually work. You can't do that. Yeah. Like I would never post something that I didn't know was actually valid. <clears throat> 
I've had it happen before with very minute things. Like I'll use Fanspo and and it turns out like the Mavericks actually traded or that per, the pick they have in there is protected so they can't trade it. So I've like included that type of thing. But like the salary thing, like, or you could just do math. Like you could just do math in your head. It's not that hard. Like I, <clears throat> that always gets me just, you know, Caruso makes nine million. Pritchard and and uh, one salary makes six. That you can't do that. It's not yeah. that difficult to think of. Like, what are we doing? <clears throat> it's crazy. Anyways, next thing. The no thought two for one. This one's for you, Sam. I get it. Maximizing your scoring opportunity is important, but let's do the math here. I get the ball with thirty three seconds left in the period. For me to get two shots, I have to run my offense in under nine seconds. Really, I have to run it around four or five seconds in order to get four or five seconds back after my opponent's possession. What the hell kind of good luck am I going to get in either of those windows? Even if I have the ball with thirty eight seconds to go, full shot clock, and fourteen seconds, uh, fourteen second reset after a miss, I still need to get the ball across midcourt, run a play of some sort, and fire a shot within seven seconds to give me another seven seconds on the back ends. What winds up happening is uh, the twofer makes the takes two crappy shots to their opponent's one good attempt. Uh, that's bad math at the worst of it. Stop doing it. So I'm 1,000% on a slow day going to go back and watch the end of every single quarter. And we're going to figure out if it's worth it for the Celtics. Because mm. I um, initially like pitched the idea to Celtics blog like a little while ago. And Keith was like, uh, someone has done that before. And like it does check out. But I mean for this team specifically. Because I'm watching all these games. And mm -hmm. I don't come up with thoughts for nothing. Like, even if the stats don't always say it, like we had the Sam Hauser thing. Like, there is a reason I feel the way I feel. Like, I no longer believe when Hauser shoots the ball, it's going to go in every single time. Something had to change to where that changed. For me to mm -hmm. think the two for one is a bunch of shit, there's a reason for that. Maybe it's Scal just, like, gassing it up every single time just for it not to work. Mm -hmm. But I just can't conceptualize how two rush shots like that are any good when you can pick your spots and get the best look to close out a quarter. I get the math will tell you two shots, two chances to make the shot, but I don't know, man. Like I don't want to see guys just sprint up the floor and throw up a three. I understand what you're saying. Um, I stand on the math. I know it hasn't been great this season. I still think like it's, fine and they're okay with it because i think joe Missoula has emphasized a lot this year like realistically as as not math as it is like in those very minute specific scenarios the more shots you get up the better right like you outshoot your opponent like that's how they've approached threes right they don't shoot the best percentage in the league but they take a lot more and they make a lot more than everybody else and it works out that way so um it's been bad this year at times and i i don't think you're crazy for thinking that i'm curious to know if you actually do end up looking into it and seeing it but um i think we'll i swear to god i am it's gonna happen but last thing on the two for one, there's a read the room situation with the two for one because the close of a quarter is extremely important. There are times you cannot afford to dick around and just be like, well, maybe we'll make one of these or maybe we'll make both. Like sometimes you don't really need to gamble at the end of quarters. You don't you don't need to like play with fire, risk the other team getting an opportunity to make up points on you if you already have a lead. Like the Denver game on Friday is a great example. There was two that they fucked up where. Tatum rushed one and Holiday rushed the other. I know somebody in the comments disagreed with me on the Holiday one. That's whatever. You can disagree. The, I Holiday, the Holiday one, one was okay. The was stretch right. of the Holiday one was worse, though. After his shot, they don't even get the, the defensive rebound, and they have to rush a Pritchard three after it. Like, you just took two quick threes because you're going by principle. It just hmm. doesn't make sense to me. <clears throat> it is what it is. Uh... Next one from RJ. Tip out rebounds. Grab the damn ball with both hands. Not in position to do that. Well, learn to get in position. Damn it. Also, you should never let a rebound hit the floor. Never. Tip in, tip in rebounds uh, on offense are marginally better, but like any shot, you've got to practice them to make them count in a game. Otherwise, remember the three Gs. Grab the rebound. Gather yourselves quickly and go back up. Uh, I disagree. I think the tip out rebounds would be good. We talked about it last night. Like I, I think, I, I think it's uh, for both, but I think they're valuable in some points. Yeah, I think it's far too... I, what's i don't know the right word for it i don't think it's fair to say just grab the rebound or get in position for it it's the nba you're not always gonna be able to do that so by tipping it out like you're creating more opportunities because like if that's all you can do that's all you could do you're not always going to be able to just find yourself in position to grab the rebound like and if you're not in position to grab the rebound what would you rather them just like not go for it i i think the tip outs have been fine this year and i think they've worked for the celtics to be honest 
<clears throat> so I'm okay with it. But yeah, yeah, that's my like, take. Tap for music was in our common space. And slapping the ball off the boards is terrible. I'm shocked that anyone who knows basketball would recommend it. It's ineffective and lazy. Control is more important and efficient. And like but, I do agree with that to an extent. I replied to myself, I think there's some value in both, but I can see the just grab it angle. It just feels like tap outs have been effective for the Celtics lately. Like they've done a good job. Several of their big time like possessions where they got like four or five offensive rebounds have been because of that. Mm-hmm. And there's definitely a reason also, they're doing it. It feels like a new trend for them. Do you feel well, the same also, way or have they been doing it all year? I think it's it's new. I think they've been doing it a decent amount all year. I do think the offensive rebounding as a whole has been new this year. I think that's been a new point of evidence. My thing is, and this is not a shot at you, RJ. Like, I understand your reasoning or the commenter, but, like, you can't say just grab it. Like, that's not how rebounding works. You're not always going to be in the position to perfectly just grab it. A lot of times we've saw – honestly, do you know what's happened? Earlier in the season, we we looked at Luke Cornett. He was kind of struggling rebounding. Honestly, he was struggling because he couldn't grab the ball because people were fighting him, and he's not – realistically, he's a big dude, but he's not the strongest guy on the court. He's just large. It's just what it is. And so he would grab it. He'd get slapped away. He wouldn't be able to control it. By being the tallest guy on the court, he can get to the ball first and smack it out in a controlled way to the guys in the perimeter, right? And I think that's why it's working better to some degree. And so I I think there is value to the tap out rebound. Obviously, And obviously you would rather them grab the ball and control it. That's not what I'm saying. If you have the, like, if Luke Cornett is, has box out and has it, grab it first, obviously. But I, I don't think they are replacing easy rebounds with tap outs. I think they're tapping it out when they cannot grab the rebound. And I, I think that's unfair to say just grab it. If they could just grab it, they would. <laughs> These tap outs are not in no, place true. of the normal rebounds. They are in, in addition to them because they can't always be in position to do it. And for what it's worth, the corner crashing the Celtics have emphasized, they will go in and try to get it. But with that much momentum and other guys already in position, sometimes the slap out is the only thing that's available. So I do think there's value to it because I don't think it's instead of grabbing it. I think it is in addition to grabbing it and that's not being accounted for with these arguments. Yeah, no, I mean, there's definitely situations where it's just not possible and that, that's mm-hmm. fair. Yeah. So that's my, uh, that's my thing. Okay. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Next one from RJ we got is uh shooting to draw the foul this made a lot more sense back in the paul pierce or james harden heydays when you can get a foul call by sweeping your arms up through the defense you can still do that get contact and get a shooting foul these days drive like you're going to attempt a good shot you don't have to uh if you don't have a good shot pass it out to a teammate do not fire at a random shot in the middle uh, of incident until at best contact uh and then mean mug the ref because they rightly ignored your weak sauce game uh, and then RJ said, okay, that's enough vitriol. I'll end on a happy request. Uh, we'll do this after. But this this shooting draw the foul. I don't think the Celtics have been doing this too much this year. Tatum's done it a few times, but um, I think for the most part, they've been okay. Derek White's also done it a couple times. but I, I hate when guys do this. Fair. Even even guys on the team. <laughs> like, if Tatum does it and I'm watching a game with my dad, I'll be like, that's awful. Like, he should not get rewarded for that. I don't think they should get rewarded for this. I think the swipe throughs are a bit different because that's actually natural. Like, I think, like, if you watch Porzingis, right? It's the way you reach, I teach. You reach, I teach. <laughs> yeah. If he's at the free throw line, turns around and, and moves the ball to his shooting side and goes up and gets hit, it's a little different. But the jumping into guys and hoping that they blow the whistle is there's no place for that. <clears throat> it's terrible. Uh, yeah. I think, let me question. So if Chris stops, so Chris stops, you said that the sweep through is fine. What if Jason Tatum does it at the three point line? It is a funny question. I think because on threes, it it's should the be same. Different. Because it's the same exact thing, but you dislike the concept of bad threes, and so I think you're going to think it's worse. I do, and and I think you nailed it's it. Not like I, it's the same thing, though. It's can you let me explain it? Sure. I think when you're inside, like Porzingis, there's always going to be a defender there. That's how it goes. Those shots don't come easy in basketball. You're not really creating open looks at the free throw line. It's just not how it goes. Three pointers are different. There's not a lot of room in the game for guys to just like take three pointers if they're heavily contested. And if you do, it's kind of a bad shot. I think if you're looking to create a bad shot like that, it's different than if you're at the free throw line and doing it. Cause that's not necessarily a bad shot, especially from a Porzingis perspective where he's taller than everybody. So if the arm is out like this and I'm, I'm just reaching my arm out for audio listeners, arm is out like this and Porzingis sweeps through and draws the contacts and shoots it and gets the foul call versus Tatum doing it. 
with arm out like this, same thing, same exact like positioning from the defender, sweep through a three point line. I think that's the same thing. I think if they're both at the three point line, it's both bad. I, I think it's the same thing. It, Porzingis is trying to draw the foul. I understand. I, I guess you can both, understand the, it. From, the three point line is different to me. I just disagree. Is. Okay, that's fine. I, that's why I asked because I figured you would think that. Um, yeah, I just said that's enough vitriol on the happy request. Do either? I will say actually, I, I do. I understand it a little bit because I do think there's probably a better likelihood that Kristaps will make it regardless at the three for, three throw line than the three point line with Tatum. So I, I guess I can understand it from that perspective. But I do think the concept of going to draw the foul purely like without trying to make the shot and just going for the foul is the same concept regardless of where you. I also think Porzingis just shoots like that. <laughs> I don't think so. He shoots. He shoots like this. He's when he, he does, through, he but he like this. He often brings the ball as a as a sweep through, but like that's what he does. Like that's his post move. Like you're not really turning and posting up at the three point line. Like if he does it in the paint too, uh, like he swipes through and gets guys' arms caught. I just, yeah. I I think the the shot quality thing should matter. It should matter. Last thing from RJ. Okay, that's enough vitriol. And then a happy request to either of you. The screen capture from when, when KP leaned down and kissed D. White's bald head in the third quarter. It was priceless. Be well. We posted it as a short on the channel. Uh, if you'd like to go check it out, RJ. We 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 predicted it. Sam said uh, there's more space for D. White to kiss. And then look at Christoph Porzingis go. Hey, more, uh, more service area on the bald head. Got 6.8 thousand views on the YouTube short. So go check it out. Nice. <laughs> um. All right, next thing uh, from, I think RJ had another one. Yep, 12 hours ago from RJ. What's popping too legit to quit? <clears throat> this was after the Celtics-Rockets game. Happy Sunday evening, guys. A double dose of Celtics victories today. Up north in Maine, the lobster lads, still electric. Good name. Lit up the baby heat, 131 to 125. Even without Jordan Walsh, J.D. Davison. Um even without Jordan Walsh, comma, J.D. Davison, who had 36.7 rebounds, 10 assists, and Drew Peterson with 30 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, led five main players in double figures. Peterson was also on fire from deep going 6 for 8. Maybe we'll see both of them get some time with the big club later this year. In Houston, it was interesting to see what Ime Udoka cooked up and how the Celtics responded. Appeared that the, the Rockets were selling out hard on Tatum and Brown, willing to commit two and even three defenders uh, on them while other defenders were trading into the passing lanes rather than guarding players to frustrate them both. So Coach Missoula countered with the lineup of equivalent of pulling the chair and sat both Jason and Jalen for the last 5.30 of the second quarter. The result both left the Rockets confused and got the Celtics moving the ball more crisply, closing out a half on a 19-12 to run. The second half was more of a slog, but everyone found ways to contribute. KP got 32 points and avoided fouling out. JT offset 4 for 17 night from the field with 9 of 12 at the line. Brown and White each collected 11 rebounds while JB posted a triple-double. Not a pretty win, but a win nonetheless. Also, shout out Luke Cornett. Uh, and yeah. The win is a win. <laughs> That's where we stand. A win is a win. Got got the win at the end you of the You shoot day. in the Luke Cornet there. I double I did, checked yeah. the screen. I was like, did he write that? No, he didn't. No, I said it. I said it in shout out to Luke Cornet. Yeah, of course, shameless. Luke Cornet's a beast. I I, I think I the email is interesting to this though. <clears throat> yes. I agree too. I was I was just saying I, I will unabashedly take any chance I can to praise Luke Cornette because I think he gets an unfair amount of hate. And so I got to offset it somehow, but Fair. I do think the Luke, the email thing is interesting. And I, I think to something that we've both been talking about, cr please credit Joe when he does something good and not just bash on him when you don't think he's doing something good, even when you're wrong, like, like I credit Joe for his uh, adjustments in that Rockets game. I think he was great. Um, and not only that, but a lot of people who bash on Joe said, I wish we had email back. He outcoached Ime objectively. He just did. So what do you want? <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> come on. <clears throat> All right. Next email from Ryan Hall. G League. Quick question, boys. Is it me or do you think that there's guys in the G League that you'd prefer over Svee, Bant, and Stevens? They're basically unplayable unless it's a blowout. And I feel there's better guys who could fill a niche role. Sucks we can't get rid of the players uh, if we wanted. Much love, Ryan. Uh Maybe there's better guys you'd rather take a chance on, but I don't think it's the fact that the Celtics can't depend on these guys, et cetera, et cetera, and they're not unplayable until it's a blowout. They just are the worst players in the team because the Celtics have a really good team, right? Like they're not not playing because they're unplayable. Say. Yeah, they're, they're not unplayable. They just don't play because they're not good enough for this, like to, to play in they're this unplayable on the elite Celtics. Celtics rotation. Yeah, they'd play on a lot of <laughs> other teams. Like, you know what I'm saying? There are teams out there like, Steve McKay would probably be able to play on the Lakers. I, Sam, 
I had this exact conversation with Bobby and Cam uh, at a game recently. It was like, how many how many other teams do you think he would be in the rotation for? And they're like, eh, I don't know. We can't play defense. I go, I bet the Lakers would play him. So uh, 100%. Yeah. I agree. 100%. Yeah, it's like LeBron yeah. needs shooting. Trot him out yep. there. And then if he if he's bad, yep. you can be like, this guy sucks. He doesn't play defense. Uh, <laughs> LeBron needs more help. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just don't know how much better there is out there. Like, what, what are you gonna find? Like, th- there are definitely guys in the G League who you could take a chance on and aren't good, but a lot of them are two-way deals. Like the Celtics found Drew Peterson, so credit them for that, right? Like there, there are stuff like that, but I don't know. I don't I'm, know I'm if pretty those okay guys are ready yet down there, though. Like Jordan Walsh didn't look ready. Drew Peterson definitely doesn't have the body to play. No, no, no. I'm not. Yet. I'm not saying. Um, I didn't mean the Celtics two-way players. I meant like there's a lot of players in the G who played right. well, but a lot of them are on two-way contracts with other teams, i.e. the Celtics couldn't get them, right? Like, so it's not like a lot of amazing players are available. The reason I bring those guys up is, like, you can pick out a lot of G League players and you pick something. This is why this this guy's not in the league. This is why that guy's not in the league. Mm -hmm. With those two, those are two glaring things that just stick out. It's like, they're just not ready. Like, Jordan Walsh isn't ready. Drew Peterson's not big enough. Walsh really isn't either. So those guys would get abused. It's just, it's the fact of the matter. It's why they do have a G League system because, may not get NBA opportunities, but to Ryan's point, there's still something there with a lot of these guys. There's no point in, in having them not play basketball. There's obviously Mm -hmm. a great place for them to develop and then maybe be in the league when someone decides it's time. I agree. I was just looking at some, uh, what, what happened? (laughs) Right. The inflammation is back. (laughs) Oh, Chris stops is out. Uh, why did we get a Woj tweet for it? That's weird. I don't know. Let me tweet it out. I'll, I'll beat Woj. <laughs> oh, or I won't beat Woj, but um, interesting. Uh, it's got to just be because he played a lot of minutes last night, right? Probably just back to back. Yeah, I'm Big not. test for the Celtics coming up now. They have to be without their <laughs> best player over the weekend. <laughs> Very weird for... Uh, it's not that weird. They haven't uh, been playing him back to back. No, no, no. Backs. Woj tweet. Woj tweet is weird. Oh, the Woj That's tweet, yeah. Saying. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, I was looking at guys in the G League just to see, like, oh, is there anybody? Is he right? Like, could there be people? Uh, and I found someone. I was like, I was looking for um, bigger. <laughs> Kenneth Freed. I was looking at bigger forwards. That reminds me, RJ tagged me in a video. They caught up with Kenneth Freed in the G League, so we'll have to watch that maybe at some point. Uh, not today, but didn't uh, Justin say day. he like told him about <laughs> us and he was like respect? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. <laughs> Shout out, Justin. Justin lives in Mexico City. Um, I was looking at the G League guys, though. I was looking like, oh, they probably want bigger forwards because they have a, a decent amount of guards already. There is this guy, Andrew Funk, who is shooting well on high volume threes, but he's not shooting well from the field. And I found this guy. I'm like, oh, 46 from the field, 42 from three on 8.8 threes, six rebounds a game, almost four assists. This guy's pretty good. Justin Jackson. And that should tell you all you need to know about G League players. <laughs> like, it's tough. You know what I'm it's saying? tough to judge them yeah. off stats because the competition is just different. <laughs> and I will also say the reason a team like the Heat, and this isn't a shot at the Heat, it's a credit to them. The reason a team like the Heat is able to turn them out because they don't have like a set rotation every single year like the Celtics do. So they have room to give these guys minutes to develop them. And then they find the guys like like Haywood Highsmith, like uh, Duncan Robinson, like Max Roos, like Gabe Vincent, like because they are able to give them significant minutes on a team that's just good overall. So <clears throat> I think that's a big difference to note as well. So and Spolst uh, was probably something to do with that too. <clears throat> yeah, of course he's amazing. Knows how to use them the best, get the most out of them. Like we've seen guys leave Miami and just not be there. Like Tyler 100%. Johnson got like eighty million dollars from the Nets and then fucked off. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. Gabe Vincent. I mean, I know he got hurt, but yeah, he's not really doing much for the Lakers. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. Last email from Philip between a drip and a flood. Hey fellows, first off, have to thank you again for the huge amount of content you pump out. I appreciate your occasional inside the NBA style mixed with solid analysis. The new shows with Bobby are always insightful. It's all as if it's on my birthday every day and I'm getting a present over and over. Sorry, new listeners. Happy birthday, Philip. Uh, should we put no, I'm not going to put no. out <laughs> it appears to me that JT and JB are still finding it hard to achieve the last bit of synergy together and I think I'm finally seeing why I believe the problem is how both players tend to barely drip in their contributions for a period of times then proceed to flood their contributions right after at times JT is just hanging around on offense the drip uh, for minutes and then at times okay. while Brown cooks at other times JB is taking every dribble and every shot on multiple possessions in a short time uh, period the flood you see what I mean Oftentimes, the Jays aren't offense threats at the same times, and we see them struggle. Um, it seems to be during those times, uh, as teams are able to focus on the one active star, 
if they can put themselves between the innis, innocuous strip and the inefficient flood, there would be a much better result. More passing, better spacing for better shots, and more consistently, it would simply be harder for defenders and their coaches to stop us. In part, this is why I think White has had such high pit, impact on the team because he is conscious of using all the team's weapons when he controls the point, uh, as where maybe the Jays are more drip flood. Am I daydreaming, or do you think there's something to this? All the best, Phil. P.S. I d- daydream a lot, so don't worry if you wholeheartedly disagree. I definitely see the point because it does feel like there are a lot of times in games where it's like Tatum time, Jalen time, Tatum time. I also think a part of that is because, and this is not a knock, this is not they can't do it together. They do a lot of the same things with the ball in their hands. And so when one has the ball, it's not like like they're doing a lot of stuff. And when Tatum has the ball, he's doing a lot of stuff. Maybe you switch it up possession to possession. Something I'd like to see is them screening for each other more. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll let you. So... I think the Derek White point of this is really interesting, and I think it's important. Mm-hmm. I think we've seen a lot of instances where the Celtics have been a little bit better at not being dripper flood. The Rockets game last Saturday was a great example. Like that was the best I can remember off the top of my head. Both Tatum and Brown playing at the same time. I think Jalen Brown does a lot more things where he's able to be successful as the non focal point. Not to try and knock Tatum because I'm not really trying to do that right now. But Brown is really good on the catch and shoot in the corner. That's one of the things he does. At least it's a strong dose of his offense, right? He's also pretty good on cuts. Tatum doesn't do a whole lot of cutting. He doesn't do a whole lot of catch and shoot. A lot of it is because of the defense just not leaving him. Like, he's always going to be the focus of the defense, so he doesn't have the luxury of being able to, like, thrive off the ball. Mm -hmm. Unless you're running around like a chicken and your head cut off like Steph Curry does. (laughs) It's just not going to happen. Uh, but I do think Derek White is super important. I think Porzingis is important. And I also think the low post, whether it's Porzingis or Tatum is imp- or Jalen, is important to this stuff. That allows the Celtics to offensively slow it down, make the defense panic for a prolonged period of time instead of just on a drive. And it's a, a prolonged version of the driving kick. <laughs> then you can help everyone feast while one strong scorer is able to create. It shouldn't be the offense at all times, but I think it's a really good option for late in the game. Porzingis was a good option in the Houston game. We've seen Tatum do it. Brown had 10 assists the other day from making the right decisions. I think that's a big growth point for him too. And I know Bobby pointed that out earlier today, but thinking about it, he's really right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I do think it's important for them to get everybody involved. The team's too good for them to have the ball stick too often. Um, and I think they have been better o- or good overall at that this year. But these last two games have really brought in the, oh, what's wrong? Uh, when really it could just be two rough games, right? Like it happens. It's January. Like if there's any time for it to happen, it'd probably be right now. So <clears throat> it is what it is. Better now uh, than April and May. And- <clears throat> absolutely. I'm not too worried. Anyways, let's jump on over to the NBA standings. Check in. See what is cooking up around the league. Uh, <clears throat> see who's playing well. See who stinks. Uh, and see how the Pistons are doing, because, of course, let me share the NBA standing screen. Uh, The Pistons back to the basics, two losses in a row for them. In fact, the entire bottom of the East losing, entire top of the East winning. Um, Cavs have now won seven in a row, Philly five in a row. However, I, I saw... I saw somebody talk about, you know, the Cavs are the hottest team in basketball right now. They're they're cooking. Uh, and then I saw someone post their schedule. Washington, yeah. Washington, Spurs, Nets, Bo- uh, Bulls, Milwaukee without Giannis, Atlanta. So, good for the Cavs. Context is important. Both can be true. Both can be true. So, they're uh, phrase tweeted out the Cavs, the Cavs <laughs> schedule and it was like, please be serious. <laughs> just, <laughs> just all those terrible teams they're playing against. The interesting part of this to me is the top of the East, like everybody is winning. But the Uh, only teams that have gained a game on the Celtics in the last 10 are Cleveland and New York. The rest of them have either – no, it's not even either. They've literally lost ground. Milwaukee has lost two games over the last 10. Philly has lost one, and they're on a five-game win streak. So good for the Celtics. Even though it feels like they've struggled lately, they apparently have not, and they've done a good job at keeping the rest of the teams at bay. It's just a nice like perspective thing. Yes, I'll say this. If seven and three is struggling, you probably have a pretty good team. You probably have a pretty it is good kind team. of struggling though. <laughs> no, it is. That's why I'm There's saying a lot like, of losses in two weeks. Good sign. I, I agree with you. That's why I'm saying like Celtics are a good team. The standards just higher. Um <clears throat> Bulls have won two in a row. They just can't get over that five hundred mark. Magic, four and six in the last ten. Uh, they have come down from their early season Utah Jazz esque high. Um it's not the same thing, but you know what I'm saying from last year. 
Uh, Wizards still suck. Pistons still suck. Nets, Raptors, Hornets all still suck. Hawks still suck. Pacers lost the trade. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh and two since landing Siakam. This is true. They and are in fact zero and two. Time to <laughs> blow it up, out. buddy. <laughs> They'll figure it out eventually. This out is West. like kind of important oh. though, like because we did the Siakam video, right? Huh. We were like, it's January, whatever it was when we did it. It was like right after it happened. There's like a month until a trade deadline. They have a little bit of time to gauge whether they want to push even more chips in on this year's team or to wait <laughs> and see what they can do in the summer. Now. I don't think two losses is the end of the world. There's going to be growing pains, but if it continues, that could hinder them from wanting to go all in. Potentially. <clears throat> I think it's just, like you said, growing pains. We'll see what happens. Um, they'll be fine. I'm not worried about the Pacers. Um, <clears throat> not that you care about how well they do. Out, out West, top of the West, Timberwolves just lost, however, two win streaks for the Thunder Nuggets Clippers. Lost OKC. Hmm. <clears throat> Yes, they did. That's correct. Uh, Suns have won five in a row, seven and three in their last ten. Clippers eight and two. They're the hottest team in the West. Jazz still seven and three in their last ten, despite losing two in a row, uh, which is crazy. Um, Spurs won a game. There we go. They beat. I think they beat the Wizards. So it, it is what it is. But any win for the Spurs is a win. So they take. Yeah, they because one beat killed Bagley, which I learned this morning. Yes, I didn't see that clip. Have you seen it yet? No, but Bobby was talking to us about it. No, I know. I, I just I'm saying I haven't watched it. Should we watch Should it? Should we Let's pull it up? It. Yeah, I got pull this freeze up. frame is insane. Okay. Oh, this is perhaps the craziest free freeze frame I've ever seen in my life. Okay. Oh my god. Oh, okay. So I saw this freeze frame, <laughs> but I did not see Marvin Bagley. That's how much lower he is than Wembenyama. <laughs> this is insane. Wembenyama also looks like an animal. He looks like a big grasshopper. Dude, he's freakish. He's in. Uh, he's gonna win a lot of titles. I asked Bobby and Cam this the other day. Do you think I when the Spurs were in town? I said, Do you think we see this finals at some point? As it, i.e., Wemby versus Tatum. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, is that because you think Wemby will make the finals, and you hope Tatum's still making it by the time he's? Well, if we him? see the finals, it means the Celtics will make it at least one more time. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay. Is there a video? I want to see the video. Here it is. Oh my god, it was a charge. Boo. Oh no. Boo. Right. Not the you. same. Was a charge. Uh, yes. It was a charge. <laughs> crazy. Crazy that went in though. Insane that this went in. Yeah. That, that Do was you think charge. the charge rule needs to change? No. Uh watch the bench clear first. Watch the bench clear out. <laughs> <They just like laughs> uh I don't know. Me. Like, that's not how you defend a dunk. I think certain charge rules needs to change this. So I'll, g I'll give you an example. This specific play right here. Let me, let me go back to it. This play. Absolutely fine. Nothing needs to change. Want to know why he was here the whole time. He never left this spot. It wasn't like Tyus Jones stepped into one B's lane to draw a charge. This stood his ground was there the entire time. He has a right to be there because he was always there. That's this a, charge. a very you know good, what I'm like on the fly. Take. <clears throat> mm -hmm. well i've thought about it before and you want to know why i thought okay. about it let me pull it up um i, I can up. find one so easily i'm hoping i just um, think i know exactly what i'm thinking about i think the sliding over like when someone's in the air is weird like if you're playing actual like i, I always go to pick up but like i feel like that's one of the more pure like forms of the game where everyone kind of just plays like honest real hoops like nobody's taking a charge if you go to the basket and if they do it's kind of mm. lame Yes, I'm not I saying agree. you should never take charges in the NBA. But what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. the situations where it is inappropriate do not happen if you play pickup basketball. Correct. Uh, let me find a way. I think this is the play I'm thinking of. I have a specific play in mind, or at, at least a specific player in mind that I'm hoping mm -hmm. to uh, to find an example of. Um, it's. Uh, I'll just say it. it's Aaron Neesmith. The way Aaron Neesmith charges, draws charges oh, is wrong. No. It's incorrect. Yeah. Uh, and this isn't, oh, I dislike Neesmith. This isn't, oh, I, I, like I think this. he is whatever. I just Make think all what, those he, things. what he does, no. What he does, I think, is is dangerous. Because uh, his, his is not the, and I'm hoping I can find this, and I'm hoping I'm thinking of the right player. His is not the stand in one place, find it. His is the, let me slide under you while you are about to be in the lane, jumping up for a layup. And I mean, Marcus did that too and like, i think if it's you the want wrong to like, point other people sure like, no yeah marcus it. does it um i just it, it's it's dangerous man i don't think you should be able to slide over 
it should be what is the exact rule right now do you know off the top of your head no i have no, i'm not a rules guy i think what it should be is if you are at all moving when the player gathers the ball block automatically a block does not matter it is a block you can't you can't move you can't step in there you have to be in your spot yeah. you can like shuffle your feet a little bit but you have to be in your spot when the guy is gathering the ball for it to be a charge like Bagley was on this play um, it is kind of funny like but, you mentioned it like that yeah the man Wemby can gather from the three-point line Giannis can gather from the three-point line and so it's gonna their- be impossible to stop these guys exactly. if that was to be the rule not to say you're right or wrong but just thinking about what the out- outlook would be on that, crazy stuff. Good luck. Yes. No, I mean, Giannis yeah. just and, gained and... like 5,000 points. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. And, and I think they get – um, that. that's just the advantage they get for being freakishly tall. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> But I don't uh, – post Neesmith charge. Okay, so there was, there was a Neesmith charge. In in this Celtics, sorry. Now I'm like going down a rabbit hole trying to. No, figure there was out one at the end of the point. game, and I think he got Tatum. Tatum, which they played like the Pacers so many times. <laughs> it might have. I think it was the in season tournament loss. I just need. Sorry, <laughs> that's uh, okay. <clears throat> I like that you called timeout. I know. Well, because I was like, okay, I found one. This one's iffy. This one's on Derek White. Um. I also think there should be some subject subjectivity to charges, meaning in in, if I'm going to call back to a non charge play to this. So bear with me. But in a situation like you saw on Friday when Porzingis went over Jokic's back and knocked him down. Mm -hmm. Look at those two gentlemen and tell me if you really think that Jokic is going to get knocked over by Porzingis like that. No way. So. I think to that point, like as sucky mm-hmm. as it is, and as it well, this could help even out the the balance of this, right? Because we're talking about guys being able to take long strides and take advantage of a gather. But somebody like Giannis should just not be able to take a charge unless it's like a beat. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Peyton Pritchard, if he and I don't think this would ever happen, let's use different like let's say Ja, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say Ja goes in to dunk on Giannis and Giannis just takes a charge. Mm-hmm. On what planet is Giannis going to get knocked over by Ja? <clears throat> no shot. I will also say, per the Bagley thing, um, <clears throat> th- there is a part of me that says just try to defend the shot, but there is no way he can defend the shot. And if he does jump there, it's going to get called for a foul. So he has like there is only the only way. I did find the Neesmith thing that I wanted to compare it to. Sorry, we've gone down this rabbit hole, but I, it, it's our podcast. It's we interesting. Can do it we don't have a time. Um, long this is the play. Years. This you were correct. Jeez. This is the exact play I was thinking of. This in no world should be a tar- charge. It's dangerous. It should be a a flagrant on Neesmith. This is a dangerous basketball Let's play. Take a look. Remember, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it once and then I'm gonna break it down for you. This is should be a flagrant all day. No shot that should be allowed. There is yeah. no way that should be allowed. Ready? And I'm gonna break it down for you. Can I slow it down? I can't, but I'll I'll go for I'll go slow. Watch this. So my point on the gather, defender should have to be in place. Gather. Tatum has not decided even, he is going to dunk the ball at this point, and Neesmith is in the restricted area for those walks. Not even close. Not even close to being in position. He's not in position for another full second with t- another full step. I mean, he's still moving his like his midsection as Tatum is leaving. Yeah. There, this is a dangerous play. In no world should this be a charge. This should not be allowed. Like th- this, this is the this is what I was saying when I said the difference. Tatum literally has to abandon the ball just so he doesn't hurt himself and Neesmith. Not allowed. This is ridiculous. So that that's where I think the charge should be eliminated. I don't I don't think the charge should be completely taken out of the game because I do think like then offensive players could just do whatever they want. Like Giannis would be able to have rain, but other situations where I hate the charge, I hate the pass charge. I hate when guys pass the ball and then get called for a charge because they were on a driving kick. Yes, what do you think? Of I that? agree. Uh, yeah, you agree to some degree. I think it's similar. Like if Giannis is going full barrel to the hoop and runs into somebody, but just happens to pass it out, like that's still probably a foul. You know what I'm saying? If like somebody is full blown running at you and runs through you while you're in position, I think it's the same thing. It just depends on when you gather the ball to make your play. That's another non charge situation. Hmm. I'm sorry. If you're shooting a floater, you can't, you can't draw a charge on a floater. The whole point of the floater yeah. is that you stop yeah. and you don't keep going. If somebody 
tries to take a floater and, and someone's in front of him and falls down, not a foul. Or, or, <laughs> I agree. or it's a regular foul. It's not a charge. I think I, I saw that too when I was looking at the Derek White one. I think Derek White was shooting a floater. Let me double check this. I just say, like, the, these yeah. are the kind of things like I find myself saying when I watch broadcasts. Like, that cannot be a foul. <clears throat> Here it is. If you're trying to stop by taking a floater, it can't be a foul. Ready? Let's break it down. I'll play it and then we'll break it down. Shouldn't be a charge. What are we doing? <laughs> like, like, ready? Watch. Let's take a look. Derek White has the ball, puts it on the floor. Pump fakes Turner. Dribble, dribble. Gathers. Neath Smith is still jumping into his spot. Gathers the ball. He's not in his spot. In the restricted area on the gather. In the restricted area on the gather. Derek White, he has no space to land, by the way. He also so jumps moving. forward. Yes, he's jumping into Derek White on this play. Derek White has no room to move. So Derek White is jumping vertically for the floater, but Neesmith is under him. This is a flagrant. I, I truly believe if you are jumping under somebody after they gather the ball, it is a flagrant foul. Well, if you're going to make it, it a, a flagrant on three-point shots, it should be a flagrant on this. Like Exactly. should not be able to three-point shots, it. I understand the freak ankle injuries happen, and I do understand why it's a rule. But your like, odds of getting hurt, way higher on a floater like that than a three. <clears throat> yeah. Can't do it. So I'm glad you brought that up. That's I I, I, I agree with you. Yes. <clears throat> Maybe right. instead um, of the hanging on the rim. <laughs> Maybe we should focus on something else. All right. First NBA thing we have. Uh, DeJounte Murray update, new news, something, whatever. D'Angelo uh, Russell, DeJounte Murray update. Shams says that Atlanta is looking for a third team to help facilitate any trade that would send DeJounte Murray to the Lakers. Quote, it is centered around D'Angelo Russell, a 2029 first round pick and a pick swap, I'm told. The holdup is that Atlanta, excuse me, wanted to find a third team for D'Lo. Thoughts? Another free Lakers guy. They hate D'Lo yeah. with a passion. LeBron probably wants to send him to the moon. And they're going to get an all-star caliber guy in return if some other team steps in and allows them to get a free guy. I will say, <clears throat> I'm not saying you're wrong. And I'm not saying et cetera, et cetera. I will say, five years from now, when the Paker, Lakers excuse me, are completely and utterly screwed, you'll be okay with it. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> it's okay. They're going to get another free guy to join them in free agency. So it actually Maybe won't matter. Right. But- Maybe you're right. Yeah, like I don't know. We've heard about Murray to LA for a little while now. And I will say it is it's tough to find a team that would take D'Lo. And you you want to say, oh, the Nets. Hard to make that deal happen, realistically. Because look, the we entire have point with big TPEs out there. <clears throat> no, nobody's got would the Knicks take TPE? him and give up Fournier? D'Lo? Well, I don't know if you'd like you'd just be getting a worse quickly, right? Effectively. And they just yeah, trade him for like a guy you don't use. <clears throat> Yeah, but I don't think they'd use D'Lo either. And they can get rid of Fournier after this year. D'Lo's on a contract extension for two years. That's true. Um, but like the Nets seem like the perfect team for D'Lo because it would extend their ability to make moves with cap slots. But then what? Do, do the do the Hawks just want Spencer Dinwiddie's expiring contract so they're off the deal? Like that seems kind of pointless. I mean, maybe that the picks and like they're okay with it, but... That seems pretty underwhelming. And if you throw Royce O'Neal in there, then they'd have to give up something else. And then what else are you giving up? Are you giving up just Sadiq Bay? To, like, I guess this would work. Does this even work financially? Maybe is this Memphis is Memphis a team. But Memphis is like up? season's chalk. Let's see if we can get some like assets out of this season. But I don't know what they would have to give up. Is Marcus yeah. the guy? Kennard. Maybe give up Kennard's contract for a ball handler. But then I guess, yeah. I don't know. D'Lo's weird. He, he's, I don't think he's a bad player necessarily, but I think he needs a very specific team. Does Miami want D'Lo if they can't get DeJounte? I think they just bypass the Lakers, though, and go for DeJounte Murray themselves if I'm them. So <clears throat> that's where it gets I would weird, like but... neither of these teams to have DeJounte Murray. All right, let's reset, reset, reset. Maybe the Pelicans. Should the Pelicans go get him? <laughs> the, I think Actually, I truly... You want my honest opinion on DeJounte Murray? I'm going to stick with the Spurs. Like, I think he should, they should, the yeah. Spurs should just go get him. I hear, get him back. That'd he has a good. chance to go out there, be the guy for himself. I don't hate the Pelicans, though. He said he'd welcome it, fun. too. Did you hear that? I mean, who's going to see Wemby and be like, nah, fuck that guy. Well, I'm not no, he said him. it. Uh, he said, like, someone asked him, he goes, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd welcome a trade. Pop's like a father to me. Like, something like that. He's like, yeah, I love Pop. Pop's amazing. So, of course. I which is Pop. Cool. And they have that really <laughs> tall guy. Yeah, the seven foot four freak who's going to be the best player. Yeah, they have this you know really tall guy that can do all the same things as me. 
do you know what you know i saw on twitter uh, a couple weeks ago that i thought was insanity someone tweeted you know what's crazy this might be the worst wemby will ever be <laughs> that's terrifying right? you didn't you didn't think about that did you <laughs> that is very true <laughs> how scary is that <laughs> that doesn't make you feel good does it you know what's even more crazy the west has him at the worst ever and the thunder <sighs> you know i say not my money not my conference not my conference not my conference <laughs> See you later. How many over under? What's the number? Over under two and a half, maybe three and a half conference finals that are Thunder Spurs. Four or more. I'll, I'll go over the three and okay. a half. It's crazy. These two teams are going to hate each other. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be great. I'm gonna, I love the that's, rivalry. That's going to be something I enjoy. We'll get to that later. Don't worry about it. Uh, <clears throat> next thing we got. Uh, is the Raptors looking for a first round pick for Bruce Brown? And I mean, we could do the same speculation. Where does he end up? And Sam's going to hate the answer. Lakers are probably going to be interested. <laughs> Lakers are getting everybody. It's it's officially January, February time. Lakers are getting everybody. Another team I've seen that makes some sense that Sam's going to dislike is the Sixers. Would make sense as a Bruce Brown Sixers team. Sixers are the one that it's like, yep, it's going to be them. Yep, because they got the money that you always forget about. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that makes sense. Uh, the Bucks could probably cobble something together. <laughs> Shnaming East teams. The Heat also could probably cobble something together. I saw something that said the Nuggets would want him back, but again, they don't. I don't think they have the money to get that going. So I don't think. I'm, I think that's I'm just dead water. Right now, you know what I'm gonna hate <laughs> about this trade deadline mm. is these teams will do something. And then fans are going to be mad that the Celtics didn't do anything. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, why Why is the rest of the East getting better? But Brad Stevens is just sitting there on all his assets. What's he trading for all these second-round picks for if he's not going to trade them? What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, that's, that does sound like how it's going to go. <laughs> I, think, I think you hit the nail on the head. NBA contracts guaranteed – why is Jalen making three hundred million? They could use that money to trade for somebody. Uh, I got a question for you. We talked about Grant on talking seeds. Would you trade Grant and Rachon Holmes for Bruce Brown if you're Dallas? I don't really know what they're getting out of Rashawn Holmes. I don't know. Like I, I he's literally not do not know. This is I don't not... think he's playing this season. Then, yeah, in a heartbeat, you would. Why? Why well, would you? My only thing is. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, he's played in 17 games, playing 10 minutes a night. Rashawn Holmes. My thing is, for as bad as Grant has been offensively, especially, I, I admittedly haven't watched some Dallas games. You do lose size, and that's something important, I think, with Dallas. So you lose that forward, which you probably need. But believe me, I think Grant's a good. I would take him on the Celtics <laughs> if they never trade him away. This would be perfect. And I know, I know, Bobby says, uh, you know, you might go over the cap for Drew, but not for Grant, and that's fair. But Sam. not my money. Let me paint you a picture. Grant gets traded to the Raptors. Raptors rebuild. They're like, meh, we don't know if we need Grant. Buy him out. Celtics trade for John Conchar at this deadline. That's six milli. They get minimum contracts next season. Conchar six mil next season. Three minimum deals. Grant back in Boston. I don't know how much I'm going to care next season. This is a <laughs> this is a this season issue. Because if they had the grant money, the cap slot, even if they took uh, Reggie Bullock back, mm -hmm. they could at least do something with the money and mm -hmm. fill a hole that they may think they have. Like new question, they, they have just handcuffed themselves. New question has nothing to do with Grant. This is just ADHD brain. If you were to put odds on Daniel Tice signing with the Celtics this summer, what would they be? He's a free agent. He just got bought out and signed. So yeah. Oh yeah, that's kind of how that works. <laughs> uh I don't know. I don't know if they need Tice. I didn't say need. I said, do you think? And also, I'd say plus 400. I also think it's not perfect, but I do think with Horford on his that's, way out soon, true. unfortunately. I don't know. I just, interesting. Just think it's interesting. He'll be available at some point. <clears throat> Damn, How that Horford this? thing just made me think about this too. It's like, well, that now they really have to do it this year to guarantee that they get one because it's not going to get any easier as Horford gets older. 
No, not at all. All right. Uh, next thing you got is the Wizards are selling their assets. In parentheses, in the description, I put shocker. Um, uh, according to this is Mark Stein, I believe, um, of the Stein line. Say, uh, the Raptors, Bruce Brown thing was Mark Stein too. Uh, said the Wizards are asking for at least a first round pick for all three uh, of Tyus Jones, Dato Gafford, um, and then they want two first for Kuzma. Uh, Dallas is mentioned as a team for Kuzma. I like Kuzma. I think a lot of people are too low on Kuzma. I think he's a good player. I think in the right system, he'll be even better. I mean, you saw it when he won that title in the bubble. Uh, he's averaging 22, 6, and 4.5 and on 45, 34 splits. You might say that's not that good. you got to consider shot quality. <laughs> he's probably not getting very he's, good looks. He's Washington. Tobias Harris. <clears throat> yeah. I, I think he, and I I think Tobias Harris is a good player, and so I think he'd be a decent that's player. That's what I'm saying. A, t- he's like team. a good I, like third option guy. I agree. Um, I think Dallas makes some sense. I think... Grant Rashawn Holmes and a, a pick, maybe Jaden Hardy. Like you can get something done there. Um, I think where else makes sense for him? If I'm Philly, I go get Kyle Kuzma absolutely, and I don't even have to give up Tobias Harris. You trade market like I I don't hate that for Philly at all. Actually, I think it makes him bigger. I think you could run Tyrese Maxey, um, D'Anthony Melton, Kyle Kuzma, Tobias Harris, and uh, Joel Embiid bring Nick Batum off the bench. Right? You can get. Let me see if that money works. Let me just fact check myself real quick. Yeah, Kuzma think makes Miami twenty. Could be a place. Lowry's <laughs> yes. contract, and whatever. Mm-hmm. Definitely, yeah. I agree. Um, that's the big to the money. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to give up Lowry. Uh, <clears throat> what else would be good? I don't know. I wonder if the Pacers would be interested even post Siakam. I don't think so. I think it makes too much sense. Bucks can't do it. Kings. <clears throat> what about the Cavs. You're the Cavs. Do you like Kyle Kuzma? Do you think he's a better fit for that team than some other guys? Like, you could cobble Oops. together Karis LeVert, Isaac Okoro, and I don't know what picks they have left available to trade for. Um, and then you get Kyle Kuzma. Then you roll out a lineup fully healthy of Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Max Drews, Kyle Kuzma, Jared Allen, and then Evan Mobley. And you can bump one of those guys to the bench. That's pretty good. <laughs> I think that's really good. So. I don't know. And he's better George Niang. <laughs> it's worth. Uh, better George Niang is assault. <laughs> uh, I think it's good. Uh, if at the Lakers show interest, of course, shocker. Yeah. Lakers are going to get everybody. Mm-hmm. What about the Rockets? Get the Rockets. Do you want them? Is there really room for him though? Like if you're if you're trying to step forward in the future. Like, do you really yeah. want him to come and take shots away from guys you're trying to develop? I don't know. How about Utah? Utah could be a team. Mm. I sure. know you like them as buyers, so I brought it up. I don't know <laughs> what, they, what they're going to have to give up to get him. Well, you give up Horton Tucker, uh, John, or maybe you should give up John Collins. <laughs> Say, please, God, take John Collins away from us. <laughs> You know, he's their highest paid player. I forgot that they went and got John Collins this summer. Like, and that was like, I don't even remember what we thought when it happened. Do you know what the trade was? It was. <laughs> was it like Rudy, a free trade? It was Rudy. Go, sorry, Rudy Gay in a second round. pick. <laughs> yeah, it was a free trade. Yeah. Very funny. All those years that like the Celtics were in on Collins and it was like Jalen Brown has to go in the trade. Yeah. Or Marcus. Yeah. And it was Rudy Gay that got the deal done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I like Guzman, though. I like Tyus Jones and Gafford, too, for what it's worth. Gafford, I think, I don't know what makes sense for him. I don't know what team needs that type of big. Um, Maybe the Knicks. Knicks could use a big of any sort. Um. <clears throat> Like Tyus Jones, unfortunately for the Lakers, I really like him for the Heat. Uh, I think he makes a ton of sense. I Tyus Jones on the Magic would be electric. That'd be sick. Yeah, uh, Magic cool. or my Dejounte Murray <clears throat> team too. Actually, I like that. Well, maybe you'd fight Paolo Bancaro. They have beef. Remember? <laughs> they do they? They had beef. Yeah, for a while. Let me let me find exactly what it was. They had beef a couple summers ago. Uh, I forget exactly what it was. There was something. Oh god, I would have to find it. It was like in um in one of these pro am games over a summer. Oh, um, I remember this actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was stupid. I don't know. Orlando could use like a, a solidified 
guard to go along with their younger guys, I think they can get the deal done. They have a zillion young guards that aren't going to like get them over the hump. Yeah. Thing. I don't know. They have they just drafted Anthony Black. Maybe you want to be paid. No, I I like the uh idea. Like I like the fit, but yeah. All right. Um next NBA thing we got I started playing a video on Twitter. It scared me. Uh, next NBA thing we got is the Trailblazers. Again, comes from Mark Stein's latest newsletter. Uh, they are reportedly not trading Jeremy Grant, but they will uh, be looking to trade Malcolm Brogdon. Um, Stein reported that he expects uh, Brogdon to be moved. Um, as deadline approaches, expect his name to start popping up all over the place. Knicks who need a backup point guard or one team in the mix. Makes sense. I don't know why you wouldn't at least... They'll probably... Like, I don't think Grant's necessarily untouchable. This is probably he doesn't expect him to be moved. But I don't know. Grant, for, for as bad and as much as people slewed that contract, like, I don't think it will be as bad a few years from now when the cap grows. And he is playing, like, very well this season. <laughs> like, he's averaging 22, three and a half, two and a half on 46, 40 splits. He's taking five and a half through his game. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's fine. I think contract stats. <laughs> Everything. He's a good player. I think he's a good player. Yeah. He's a fine player. Yeah. But maybe not for that money, especially because, like, that I was definitely a ploy to get Dame to calm down and it didn't work. And from that you got perspective, yes. It. But I do think, oh, looking at this, uh, it's not going to be great by 27, 28, but I think the cap's going to grow. I actually don't think this is as bad of a contract as it was when we saw it signed. They got to stop growing the, the cap. I need well, to know what to feel about certain figures in guys' that's salaries. How, I can't, that's how life I works. can't keep adjusting. How much do you think Billy Grant makes this year? He makes like thirty-five million. Twenty-seven. Oh, why? Did, he makes exactly, he makes right? thirty-five by the end, right? He makes thirty-six for a player option in twenty twenty-seven, twenty-eight. But by that point, like that's that's gonna be the same as twenty-seven. I I, I, mean, I also thought the same for, as you. I thought for it was a, a lot decent worse. Team but. to pay him that money to com- like help them compete, it makes sense. But for the Blazers to give that much, well, yeah, but their now. Cap to him, but now they have a tradable guy, right? Like th- that is a contract teams will probably want to trade for down the line because it'll be Maybe. a tradable contract. It, it, I'll put it this way. It is a lot. It's not nearly as bad as I thought it was when I think of Jeremy Grant contract, like looking at it again. I don't think sure. it's as bad. I, <laughs> so. I just think I remember the 36 player option. I'm like, that exactly. That's what I remember too. Thing. I agree. He makes 27, five, 29, seven, then 32, 34, 36. Like, not as bad. Well, what's worse, that or DeAndre Ayton's 32, 34, 36 right now? <laughs> the ice game. Ayton. Man. Ayton is a yeah. terrible contract, dude. Ayton, what is Ayton averaging this season, Sam? Would you like to guess? Uh, $32 million man. Playing he's 31 averaging like 8 tonight. points and 12 rebounds. Close. 13 points, 10 rebounds. Respect him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but Malcolm Brogdon is reportedly going to get traded. He makes 22 five this year and next, um, makes sense. I feel a little bad for Malcolm that he got traded. I, I was, I wasn't high on him as high on him as other people, but you do feel bad. Like not as bad as smart, but like he came to the Celtics to compete. He chose that he wanted to be traded here. And then a year later he's out, but Knicks makes sense. Lakers makes sense. like there were some problems there. Heat makes sense. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Would be funny if he'd traded him back to Indiana, but I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> Send him back to the Shadow Realm. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Uh, He's already in the Shadow what? Realm. <laughs> he has been sent what back to I the say? Shadow Realm. If he got sent to Indiana... You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. <clears throat> you're right. He gets sent out of the Shadow Realm. Yeah, yeah, I use the phrase wrong. Stay I use, rescued. I use the phrase wrong. Uh, next thing we got is... Uh, KD talking about the GOAT debate to AZ Central, which is just Arizona Central. Um, he's confused as to why he's not in the GOAT debate. Said, uh, because I went to the Warriors, why shouldn't I be in that? That's the question you should ask. Why not? What haven't I done? My response? Less championships? Less MVPs? Worse My response? Not the best player in your career. Like, over the span of him being in the league, LeBron has been the best guy for most of the time. And then when it wasn't LeBron, it was probably Giannis. Or Jokic. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. Or Kobe at the start. <laughs> like, yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Also, less titles, less less everything. Like, just worse stats all around. <laughs> like, uh, And it's not that he's not good. Golden State. <laughs> I did see something, and I, I think you'll back it immediately because you dislike LeBron. I saw somebody tweet, if LeBron, if KD's Warriors rings, quote, don't count, then LeBron's Miami rings don't count either. 
Uh, I don't think it's the same, but I understand. The I don't know. It's similar, but it's not the same. No. Like the, the Miami thing was like team stacking for sure. But it, like it was like they all like kind of joined. Like it was like an upstart thing. Like he joined something that was already built. Yeah. And it took him a year to, to figure it out for what it's worth. Kevin like, Durant joining the Warriors is more like Ray Allen joining the Heat to me. And those are still kind of different. <laughs> those are also very different because one was an MVP and one was Ray Allen at the end of his career. <laughs> yeah, but like it was joining a rival team after losing them in in a conference finals. Sure. So. No, I understand. I understand. It's just uh, there's levels, <laughs> I think, to those two things. Like Ray Allen joins a Heat team that's already built. Yeah. Like he doesn't join to be like one of the best players on the team, but he still joins it. Like, yeah, no, I he did. Know. He did. He ring, he ring chased. That's what he did. It's fine. Um, Last thing you put it on here. I'll let you explain SGA and Anthony Edwards have beef. Please yes. Break, break yes. The two top teams in the Western conference have their top guys going back and forth. So as we mentioned during the standings check, Oklahoma city just beat Minnesota on one of the weekend days. And after the game, Anthony Edwards was asked about the loss. And he says, it's hard to do and in, in win with Shea getting calls. It's hard to shut him down. You can't touch him at any time of the game. It's super hard to beat. That team is a good team, especially when they get calls like that. So in response to this, Anthony, Anthony Edwards, Shea has posted on Instagram and said, they talk about me for my post game, not my post game comments. Hmm. Um, I mean, I'm always chip in. on the I'm shoulder all, stuff. I, I'm always in for some beef. Yeah, why not? Like, hey, I love a rivalry. I'm always down. They talk about me for my post game, not my post game is all time. That's that's he is goaded on Instagram. Have you seen all those comments and stuff? He is. He is fun. I don't use Instagram. <clears throat> I know. I just see it on Twitter. Um, like I see people post his comments and in, in captions to Twitter. I think it's fun. He's uh. He's cool. Yeah, no, I'm in. I'm all in on Ant seems like he's very uh, into the whole like let's make have you know create some beef. And uh, I think it's funny. So I'm with it. I'm down. Why not? Okay. I'm in. Uh don't have to spend time on it, but I'll tell you the athletic Mike Vorkanov of the Athletics put out an article. Why white home uniforms once an NBA mainstay have disappeared. So I'll let you read that afterwards. Oh. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm in. All right. But uh, that's a now I know who to who to put a, like a bounty on. <laughs> I will. Uh, it's a good transition to the rat list. You can jump over to that. Would you like to kick us off, sir? You go ahead first. All right. Let me change the background and then I will go. <clears throat> Let's see. First one. Uh, so I went out with some buddies to watch football. Well, I say went out. We did, I just went to their apartment, my future apartment, um, where I'm moving to in Alston uh, in September. And we were playing Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader on the Xbox. I think uh, they have it on the <laughs> Xbox. Yeah. Oh, I have the board mm. game. Yeah, we got the Xbox version. And you can play up to eight players and you like all pass the controller around, and answer the question. It was a good game. Um, I like that. I'm in. Now, <clears throat> Sam, I have a question. On, can you do it online? Uh, Unsure. We could play, though. We could figure it out. That, uh, that would be a stream fun, it, like stream game. Stream or like, yeah, it could be like an off season thing. Yeah, I agree. All right. Question, Sam. What is the liquid that runs through trees to its branches that also is used to make maple syrup? Is it water, sap, molasses, or other? Well, my brain says sap, but because this is on the rat list, it's probably not sap. Was it molasses? I am on the rat list for this because it was sap, and I thought oh. it was a trick question. I was like, I bet they're going to be tricky. And Why well, is the same thing as you? I know I, 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 it ended up being sap. Um, I put water cause I'm like, this is probably a trick question. They probably use water to make it too, but water is like running through it and giving it. The, the question was what gives trees nutrients all the way to the branches and is also used to make this. And I'm like, I feel like it's a trick question. It could be, should be water. I was the only person to answer water and the only person to answer the second grade level question incorrectly. And I well, hated, it was terrible. <laughs> See, like, I don't know if I should feel for you or not, because I had the same reaction, but I had I the reaction because it was a part of the rat list, not because I heard the question. I know. It was, like, it was well, there's bad. no way it's sap. I just thought it was a trick question. I was like, I, w I was like, I feel like it's way too obvious to be that. So That's a like catastrophe. It, yeah. I know. It was disastrous. But then the game gave me a Mickey Mouse. Like, they have these random questions where they should be like, oh, bonus. If this person gets it wrong, everybody else gets points. But if you get it right, you get it. And I got it right. And so I didn't lose. What was the question? Uh, 
I forget, but it was like a layup. Um, it was good. Uh, yeah, but I didn't lose. But Ratless me for being the only person who got it wrong. That was terrible. <laughs> so Ratless is football fights. Mm. Uh, the NFL playoffs are on this weekend. We talked about the I, Chiefs today on this already. Yes. And I don't know if it happened in any other games, but I did like kind of stumble upon into watching the kind of end of the Lions game, or at least I saw it mm-hmm. on Twitter. And there's nothing I despise more than when football players get into skirmishes. And I know I'm a fan of the NBA and I know how NBA fights go. But these guys like will act like they're going to hit each other. It's like you're wearing helmets. Yes, I agree. I have two clips for you that you will enjoy because of this. Um, Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Uh, not yet. You you can keep okay. explaining your Ratless while I find these clips. I have a, I have a few. Well, like yeah, like they get in each other's face and stuff, and it's like you literally have like a piece of protective equipment protecting every ounce of your body. Like this is not the time to like act like you're gonna fight somebody. Mm-hmm. It's just not. At <clears> least <throat> in the I got... NBA, even though they never do actually fight, like everything is like open to be hit. Sure. All right, I have three clips for you. Okay, uh, Rat is I have gone. three football fights that. I don't know if they'll necessarily change your your viewpoint on football fights because I agree with the concept of what you're saying. Okay, but they are they are football fights can be good. Cool, thanks. Okay, first one. Gonna, okay. Uh, post game, Richard Sherman, Trent Williams. Okay. Uh, talking crap all game, and this yep. is what happens. All right. Yeah. Hey, have a good game, boy. Had to work out there. Uh, hey, what you gonna do, boy? I'm punching you. Doing thing, yeah, but he's not wearing a helmet. <laughs> no, sure, that's the one. I thought it was funny. Punch you actually got him. Then do it. <laughs> Next, but yeah, one. he's not wearing a helmet. Sure. Next one. Uh, Andre Johnson, Cortland Finnegan. Okay, Let's take a look. Let's see. Boss has three catches for just twenty-three yards. Hmm. He Andre. took his helmet off. Well, it was Finnegan no, getting just, into that it. it. That wasn't it. Okay. There's more. Hand off for Ward on third and eight. And Ward leaning forward. Flats come down. <laughs> Their helmets are off. <laughs> okay. I know, but what I'm saying is like some you, you say they're acting tough, but they got their helmets on. I'm saying sometimes there's no acting. They they rip it off and they're like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> let's, you know what I'm saying? Uh sure. that, that's the point I'm making. Uh, and the then the last one? one, it's another one where he takes the helmet off, but it's a bit more about it. Uh, is the helmet Brian, off uh being a part of the whole thing? Brian let's Cushing. See. Let's take a look. Oh, wait a second. Impressive sprint from him. Sixty six is not doing a damn thing. Sixty six is a massive pussy. <laughs> he do, and, and he listen, had... <laughs> if I'm sixty six, I'm not doing anything either. But yeah, like don't act like tough by headbutting him with your helmet on. He headbutts him without the helmet. That's all time. That's no, that's it is. That, that's behavior. tough guy stuff from him. <laughs> but like the the other guy is like what I'm talking about. It's like, yeah, you yeah. have a helmet on. Like, congratulations. Yeah, that's what I'm saying about the the Andre Johnson Cortland Finnegan fight. Like, they were about it. They took it off and they were ready. They were about it. I thought you were gonna show Miles Garrett like literally swinging and hitting the guy with the helmet. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was no, waiting no. for it. No, no, no. Mason Rudolph doesn't know. Um, uh, Ratlist FIFA. So I was playing again at the place I was at for uh, the football games. Um, we were playing FIFA, and me and Brian, uh, who is it was the guy, my friend who was on my team, uh, were up three two with like the ninety fifth minute, and we're the other team, which is Danny and Ethan. They're get getting downfield. They're in they're in the box, right? Uh, they shoot. And it goes out. We think it's deflected off us because they go to a cutscene. We're like, oh, corner. It's a fucking penalty. And and we're, we, we looked at the replay. He got hit after, like, ghost hit. Like, it didn't actually hit him. Like, you ran through behind him. Ghost hit after the ball was shot. And we I, got, we lost an well, OT. It, it was ridiculous. It, 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 I'll just, I'll just say, I'll put it this way. It was an obscene penalty. It was terrible. We were both mad. We had, we had no business losing that game. It was terrible. I was angry. Um, so that, that was, that was ridiculous. Speaking of pro Um, clubs back in the day, I was like, Mm. we, me and my friend, the two of us made it to the top division in pro clubs. So like, no, no, div one. Oh, 10. I see what you mean. I thought it was all the way up the ladder. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. No easy feat. I believe. Yeah. Big time. Love that. Uh, so speaking of video games, uh, 
Ratless to Civilization Revolution. Now, this is going to be like kind of niche, but like there is a series of video games called Civilization. This is mm-hmm. the dumb guy version of that. Like the other games are like really complicated. And like the whole point of all of these games, including the one I've been playing, is you like take like four four thousand BC, like start a country, expand, etc., and you want to win. These games take like three hours and they're addicting. So this is a fantastic way for me to waste time. And I can't even really play like the newer editions because like again, I'm playing the dumb guy version. The new ones are so much mm-hmm. more complicated, I can't like be bothered to learn it. Game fun, time wasting, not fun. Short <laughs> rat list, but it's kind of annoying, like how like addicted I am to this. It happens, man. That's how it be. A game's good, a game's good, man. You get you get addicted easily. Um rat list. Uh I, I need to explain the context before I give you the rat list. So we played uh baseball. Uh it's a drinking game. It, baseball the drinking game, effectively. And so the way it works is you set up a little table and there is three cups in or four cups in like a stoplight formation, like uh in beer pong. You know what I'm saying? We're just one, two, three yes. in a line. Uh, and you play pong and you get three shots. If you miss all three, you're out. If you miss the cups completely, like you airball the cups, it's automatic out three strikes. Um, and if you get it in the first cup, single, second, double, triple home run, <clears throat> whatever. And then there are three cups next to you in a line. So like there, if, if this is a table, there is one, like a team on each side, four players on each team. And there is pairs at each base so offense let's say i hit a double i go to second base there's a defender at second base at any time i can steal and i can drink the club cup and then i play flip cup and if i get the flip cup before the defender gets it i advance a base you can double steal whatever you're gonna get more runs effectively Uh, we did a draft i was a captain and i drafted yeah it was fun it was fun Uh, i drafted ryan who i who it is one of Danny's friends who I know from home. It's the context. He lives in the apartment that I'm moving to, but whatever, Ryan drafted him first. Ryan did not get on base one single time, meaning he didn't make a single pong cup. We got smoked eight to four. And my first pick didn't make a single like a base. He didn't get against get So I, I was mad. Just Rattles look at Anthony him. Bennett. Tragic. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony Bennett, Ryan. I'm, I'm brutal. It was, it was bad. So Rattlist Anthony Bennett, Ryan. Sorry, but it's tough. Ratless the men's league. <laughs> the men's league has once again perished. We are I've now like 0 and 8 on the season. Oh, um, disaster. We lost by 20 plus points again. We gave up 100 points. Ooh, We're getting how laughed are, off. How the long court. Are the games? How long are the games? 40 minute games. Okay, okay. Just like really bad experience. There's yeah. some disconnection between the team. Sometimes the ball doesn't move. A lot of complaining about the refs who every week just don't make calls for really anybody. And yet the teammates will be shocked. It's like, wait, we didn't get free throws. It's like, yeah, we've gotten like two free throws the whole season. Are there like refs learn- that are like paid to ref this men's league? It's not like just, yeah. Them- okay. 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 But like the officials, like, no, I, they get yeah. paid by the hour <laughs> and they're not going to prolong the game because they're on a schedule. Yeah. It's pretty like straightforward. Like, don't go in there expecting foul calls. So mm-hmm. yeah, we have once again perished. I mean, I, I don't think I played that good, but you know. <laughs> how long's the season? I think we have two more weeks, and I miss both of them because I have work trips. Gotcha. And then we have playoffs because everyone makes the playoffs. Oh, hey, and we get to play would be a miracle speed. run. Well, maybe not. Maybe no miracle run. <laughs> well, it sucks. Like I went from playing on championship caliber men's team in in the summer. We won one and lost in the championship of the second league, and then. The team took a break for the winter, so we kind of like pulled together our own team, and it's just a lot of factors yeah. into why we're not very good. Like, I'm mm-hmm. not like a good creator for like everybody. Like, I'm just like run around, catch and shoot, like that kind of thing. And like, you went from the uh, the Nuggets to the Pistons, it pretty much. It's tough. Yeah, tough look, man. It's not what you want. Jeremy Grant, <clears throat> mm. Nuggets to the Pistons. Mm-hmm. How do you like that? Oh, I just thought of an awesome rat list. I don't know if you're done or not. And sorry if you wanted that to be done, but I just thought of a great one. Um, it's a driving rat list, and I need to pull up Google Earth to explain what is happening here. Okay. Um, however, oh, I'm I have one need... after you're done with this that I can close with today because I could not okay. believe this. 
I was gonna say if you can filibuster while I try to find this, you I don't actually filibuster? know. Yeah, I don't actually okay. know the uh, what's it called the the location I have to plug in to speaking, get to this spot. But speaking of driving, today I was driving to the gym, and in my town there is a major intersection where it's near the airport, near some neighborhoods. Like a lot of people will be there, very busy. Mm-hmm. So busy that they moved a Dunkin' Donuts off the corner and moved it like two properties down just so it was easier for people to get in and out today i am at a red light the light turns green and what do i see Mm -hmm. ahead of the two lanes that i'm in heading whatever technically we're heading north i see a team of construction workers one gigantic construction truck another one that looks like a, a street sweeper and then they got these fucking guys putting down asphalt to fill potholes. It's like eight in the morning. People are trying to go to work. <laughs> this is an overnight job. Like I should not see you if you're doing road work. I just shouldn't. <laughs> it's a major intersection. Don't be yeah, in the middle yeah. of it. Yeah, that's bad. <clears throat> that's bad. Um, I'm struggling to find this exact. So uh, basically I am trying to rat list when I go the way I get to Austin, which is the, where I was for um, uh, when I went to watch the football games, I I go the same way I go when I go to the hour back center. Okay. But the rat list I'm trying to explain is there is so basically I, I just, I'm going to do it without this because I can't find the exact thing. There is an on ramp and I need you to. It's so weird to like describe. There's an on ramp that goes onto a little bridge that then goes down to another highway, right? However, the on ramp, there is not two lanes. You have to merge this on ramp with the oncoming traffic of this other one because it's also like its own on ramp. So it's two on ramps merging into a single lane, right? Okay. And so there's there's very little room to like get in together and then merge. It is, and there's no yield sign for either one, so you don't really know who has the right of way. So it's very awkward. It's very annoying. Okay. Ratless now, the Department of Transportation for that. Then. Yes, also true. <laughs> so I was driving in as you do, right? And I'm going, going, whatever. Um, and it's it's snowy, right? It's yeah. snowing, and that's because it was it was bad weather out. The car in front of me on the on ramp is going twenty five miles an hour. I understand it's snowing. But you were going to the ground a little bit, not enough for him to be going 25 miles an hour. Put it that way. Like it, it's a 55. Maybe you go 40, right? 25 is obscene in the state. The ramp Bad. itself. He's, he's going 25 or, or like the, the he's on the highway. So there, there's a little, there's a little like side highway to get to this on ramp because it's a connector. It, this is why I needed Google earth, but I can't find it. Cause it's weird. There's no like address I can put in to find. I can highway. picture what you're talking about. We have one. It's called 37. It goes like across. You can get to 95 and get to 295. Yeah. Like, but you, you can take it to get between the highways or to merge, whatever. I, I can kind of imagine what you're talking about. It was, there's no reason he should be going 25 in this spot, but so he's going Maybe even slower than twenty five on the on ramp. Like he slows down to get on this on ramp. This is gonna but be then a there's a, pod. but the, I know it's whatever. Which then there's fine. a car. There's a car coming the other way, and because he was going so slow, I didn't think I would have time to get in in front of this other car. So I slow down, and then the other car slows down because he sees us, and so then I end up having to speed up to get ahead of the car, and I get honked at. And my tires start like sliding on the ground because I'm going from zero to like 40. Yeah. I'm like, so I'm just so angry. And then we're on the road going to the next highway because of the connector thing. And the guy's still going 20. Like, so we can't go anywhere. It was, it was, I was so, so unbelievably angry at this fucking moron. Oh my God. It, it, it was, it was infuriating. Uh, and then I had to like sit behind him on the next highway for a bit because it was packed. I was, I was getting so fucking heated, man. I, it was it was unbelievable how ridiculous this guy's driving was. Terrible, terrible. Anyways, that that's all I got. I'm mad I couldn't find the uh, what's it called the uh, the Google Earth, but it is what it is. Any uh, anything else? Uh, no, no, no <laughs> final rat list for me today. All right, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you all for tuning in. 
we appreciate it very much. Like Sam said, this is going to be a very long show. Uh, but if you listen to it, we appreciate you. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to How About Them Celtics. Leave us five stars and follow us on Spotify. And then on Apple, please leave us a review. Would be very nice. Please don't call me Ganky. Please. <laughs> Just please. Um, would be appreciated if there was no Ganky uh, there, which I, I do still see a Ganky thing. But that's fine. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll let Sam wrap it up. Hey, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our weekly pods. We're doing them Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. Uh, you also will get game recaps, which will go up on the days that pods do not drop, but there was a game the night before. Talk and Seize with Bobby Kravitsky. Those go up Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We all chat, hang out, play trivia, give you good information. And then on other off days, we're doing uh, film breakdowns and rumor breakdowns and other videos of that sense. And before every game, half hour before, we are here doing live streams for the pregame, getting everyone hyped up, talking with chatters. The Houston one was a blast. I'd imagine the Dallas one was as well. So you don't want to miss any of it. Subscribe, hit the bell, leave a like, leave comments. We appreciate all of it. You can find us on Spotify and Apple, like Jack said. The audio versions of pods and game recaps will be there. If you leave a five-star review, we would appreciate it very much. You can also get in touch with us via email. You saw us go through the emails on today's pod. We always appreciate it. RJ gave us some great content. The elongated season rat list was excellent. So you can send us emails like that, or you can send us just what you're feeling about the games, and we'll read them. If you want to find us on socials, it's at Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I've been trying to run the Twitter during games at the very least. Try and post memes or whatever. Uh, the Facebook page is just the name of the pod. If you follow that, you will get the pregame streams right to your feed. They're also on Twitter and YouTube, of course. And Jack's Twitter is at Jack's Money NBA. Mine's at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. Bye. Jack Taco, come on.